into the hospital 30, 40 minutes later. So the game is much safer now, but players are also bigger, stronger, faster, and the collision's more violent now. So I watched when I was young, I don't remember when, but um, Daryl Stingley was a wide receiver who was paralyzed in a game. Uh, I can remember that. Uh, the scene was very similar to last night, players weeping. Um, and I don't even know if I watched it live or I saw a video of it, but it was um, very dramatic. So uh, DeMar Hamlin remained in critical condition in a hospital. Um, football is, um, they could make it safer. They could reduce the number of games. It is football. Um, you know, I, I never really understood. Football is a very unique sport. There are guys that have played at the NFL and have been great players who didn't play high school football and didn't play college football. Antonio Gates for the Chargers, Hall of Fame tight end, uh, will be. Um, he was a college basketball player. So unlike, um, let's say, golf um, or, or pitching in baseball where you really need experience and reps, uh, a lot of the things in football, a lot of football coaches that recruit like their athletes to play multiple sports because they believe they can get better at things like hand-eye coordination, not playing football. So the idea that you have to hit at 12, 13 years old is nonsense. That's just not the case. Uh, in fact, um, one, of, one of my the moments that really changed how I sort of looked at the preseason, um, I always love when you get what they call disruptors, when somebody comes in and says, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it my way. And years ago, Sean McVay was this young 30-year-old coach, came into the NFL and said, I'm not going to play any of my starters in the preseason. Why would I do that? Why, why would I have an older player in collisions? And people really push back. You have to do this. It's very important. The Rams started the season 8-0. and there, There's no reason to have preseason. You could have inner squad games for some intense urgency, there's no reason to have preseason games. Um, they're a ripoff to fans. College kids don't do it, and college kids are 18, 19 years old. They have class. They can only practice at college 17 hours a week, according to the NCAA. And I watch the early games in September. The kids are ready to play. So why do 30-year-olds need three more games of hitting? I do not believe that's good. I, I don't want to sit on a soapbox this morning. I don't like a 17th game. I've defended Thursday night football. You could certainly get rid of that. But I I think fewer games, less hitting, does not take away from the beauty and skill of the sport. That is my takeaway. I'm not here to be a hall monitor of all sports. Um, very capable people make decisions. Uh, football morning in America. It's NBC Sports. It's Peter King. His perspective will be noteworthy this morning. Um, I, I was saying this earlier, Peter. Uh, I do remember the Daryl Stingley moment. I don't know if I was watching it live or ta tape. I don't remember. Um, I, the, here's where I wasn't bothered. Peter, whenever we have a crisis, and I said this earlier, a president calls a governor, a governor calls a mayor, a mayor calls the National Guard. You go to the people with their feet on the ground. I was okay with the league leaning on Sean McDermott, who's saying, hey, guys, my guys can't play. I was okay with that. Now, a lot of people aren't, and they think it should have been immediately canceled. But to me, in crisis, you always lean on the guy that's in the cockpit. You lean on people on the ground. Did it bother you that it seemed to take a while to cancel the game, Peter? No, not really, Colin. I didn't think there was any way they could play after the ambulance had left and we heard that uh, we heard the emergency life-saving techniques that were that were used. So, I, I mean, we we figured that the game probably was not going to continue. But look, I, I, you know, it's 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 to me, it's a little bit crazy in real time to be suggesting call the game with an exclamation point. You know. Take your time, make a reasonable decision, make a reasoned decision, and then let's all move on. That's what I think happened. And look, I don't know what happened. I don't know if Zach Taylor said our guys can't play and McDermott said our guys can't play. I, I, we don't know that. So I think it's best in times like this to essentially say, 
you know, let's let all precincts report yeah. first before we go making, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, decisions before we have all the information. Peter, let me throw this. I, I said, um, out of respect for the Hamlin family, I said, um, sports have ties. It's just a tie game. There's no space in the schedule. Let's not jam it in. Um, go to another series of tiebreakers if you have to. That's what baseball does. They Baseball came to a conclusion that they didn't have space in their schedule for some of these late-season games to figure out who's in. They just go to tiebreakers. What about yeah. just saying, out of respect for the family, we're going to make an exception, it's a tie, which it certainly could have been, and just go with the seeding from that point. Does that make sense to you? Well, I think what makes more sense to me is just to have it to have the Bengals and Bills play 16 games this year. And and look, I have no idea what they're going to do. It really isn't the time today to be thinking about this, but it will be the time soon to think about this. And to me, Colin, I'm going to take you back a couple of years. I remember this is almost three years now because soon after COVID hit, I remember writing and reporting a lot on what the NFL was thinking about the 2020 schedule. You know, they were considering all sorts of alternatives, playing a a 12-game schedule, uh, not starting the schedule on time in September, maybe starting in October. They, They were thinking of everything. And at the time, I remember specifically one leading voice in the NFL telling me, look, This is going to be one of those years. We're going to get through the year. This is going to be one of those years where people really shouldn't care if one team plays 10 games and another team plays 14. Because we are in just uh, an extraordinary time in the history of this country. Well, I don't see the problem with the Bills and Bengals playing uh, 16 games instead of 17. And... You know, wherever the games are played, whoever has home field, let's not take this as some outrage. If some if some team goes down a, a slot in the seedings, who cares? You know, the Bengals and Bills are both going to the playoffs. Right. Where they play their games, I don't care, and yeah. they shouldn't either. Yeah. By the way, Cincinnati got to the Super Bowl playing road games last year. Buffalo's gone to Kansas City and won. I think with the new technology and the helmets with coaches talking to players, it has eliminated some of the home field advantage. Um, I'm with you. I, I, good teams win. They right. win on the road. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you're a baseball fan. When Steve Cohen bought the Mets, there was concern by other owners that he would literally just spend whatever it takes. And other owners said, that's not what we want here. Well, he's done it. Now the Mets payroll is bigger than the bottom five or six teams in baseball, and it, it looks bad for the sport. So when the Walmart owners come into Denver, I think similarly, uh, they don't you know they don't want to bring in a disruptor. But the salary I'm hearing for Harbaugh is twenty million. I'm hearing it could be more considerably for Sean Payton. And having covered the owners for years, uh, that that changes everything. I mean, the average salary is probably six seven. I wonder if inside the league that wouldn't play well just the, the the 20 million to me was startling when i heard that number what was what's your take i mean all power to anybody if they can make whatever they want to make <laughs> but, or whatever they can make so good for them but i guess my point would be i'd be a lot more concerned with instead of you know, dangling $20 million out there for Harbaugh or for Peyton. My first question would be, okay, we'll we'll get to the money, all right? But I want to have a conversation. What would be your plan to fix Russell Wilson? Yeah. Because, honestly, Colin, nothing else matters. It, it You know, George Young, the old Giants general manager, the late, great George Young, yeah. I used to cover the Giants, and one of the reasons that – he hated the idea of free agency coming into the league. This was before free agency was there. He used to tell me, he says, players don't play better for more money. And, you know, he's probably right. And I can tell you, 
I doubt Jim Harbaugh is going to be a better coach, right. whether you pay him 10 million or 20 million. So I want to know.